Six months ago, I was at GC3, just shy of SSL. Unfortunately, today, I'm still on that grind. You thought I was C2? Come on. I, I literally can't do this intro. It's so cringe. Jokes aside, what actually happened is for the past 30 days, I've only been playing with pros. Now, the catch is when you play with pros, even if I lose to like a phase AJ, I'm going to lose just as much MMR as my pro teammate. Long story short, yesterday I finished recording that and now we're all the way down at champ two. So today I want to talk about the top three strategies I used to push from C2 and C3 back into GC in no time at all with basically zero mechanics. Psych! Also, for the people who do want to get mechanical, I'll be talking about a bonus mechanic I used to push at the end of C3 into that GC range that you absolutely need to learn if you haven't yet. By the way, a lot of this gameplay was recorded on twitch.tv slash spookluke, so if you want to catch me when I'm live and ask me questions about my gameplay, that's going to be the best place to do it. Otherwise, enjoy learning some of the strategies I use to outplay C2s and C3s. I'll catch you in the voiceover. Okay, so let's start it off with strategy number one of three called closing the gap. Now, this strategy is like it sounds. All it basically means is trying to take a shot from as close to the net as you possibly can. I know what you're gonna say, Luke, how is this a strategy? Yeah, of course I wanna shoot when I'm close to the net, but you'd be surprised how many people in my champ lobbies aren't doing this. The problem I see so many players fall into at the lower ranks just across the board is taking shots just to take a shot, especially when people are at like midfield or at the corners. I'll see so many of them just rip shots that yeah, they're on net, but in reality just ends up handing over possession. Instead, what I always try to do when I catch my opponent playing back or not pressuring me enough is try to take soft touches to get as close to the net as possible before shooting. The reason this is so good is because the closer you are to the net, the less reaction time your opponent's going to have to try to save your shot. So what happens is when you effectively close the gap, you can take shots on that. And even if they're not that good, a lot of the time they'll just go in anyways. This might sound a little obvious, but trust me, when you mix it with the other strategies as well, this is how you make champ and diamond rated players look silly. Moving on to strategy number two, dribbling on an angle. Dribbling on an angle is something I see tons of champ players miss out on. And basically, the idea with dribbling on an angle is whenever you get the ball, you want to really try to hit it some amount to the side as opposed to straight at the opponent's net. You may have seen me talk about this a little bit before, but the reason this is so bad is because when you just take the ball and try to carry it in a straight line and dribble, you can't actually get any direction change with your shot. Sure, you can maybe get a flick if you just go for a carry and drive straight down the middle of the field, but if you're not incorporating lateral movement, you make it much easier for your opponent to just challenge you early and dunk you. So instead, watch how when I'm playing against these players, my first touch is always a little bit to the left or right. This allows me to one, cut around the ball and actually just beat the first challenger. And number two, it also just creates vision and time for me to approach the play. When you dribble in a straight line, you have no time, you you can't really see the opponents and you're kind of just hoping you flick before they challenge, which isn't ideal. So to do better, always start your first touches by dribbling on an angle, combine this with closing the gap and you're going to farm the C2s. Finally, moving on to the third and final element of the champ farming matrix, we've got the soft touch into hard touch strategy. Basically, the idea here is it's often better to switch up the speed of the ball while you're attacking. What most people will try to do is take a super hard first touch, maybe knock it off the backward and, and follow it up themselves. The problem is the heavier your first touch, the quicker the ball is going to move towards your opponent. So what I've found works really, really well is when you're collecting the ball, if nobody's challenging you, just take one soft touch before you go for a hard touch, you know, and try to shoot. It might sound like super obvious soft touch into hard touch. Isn't that just every play in Rocket League? And it's actually not. You'd be surprised how many people just get the ball at midfield and just boom it downfield into the corner 
corners, hoping they can dump and chase to score. One quick extra note though, before I move into the bonus mechanic, when it comes to this soft touch, hard touch principle, you can also use this in the air. Oftentimes the reason people's air dribbles, for example, aren't good is because they keep one speed throughout the entire air dribble. This makes it really easy for the defender to predict the trajectory of the ball. So whether you're on the ground or in the air, if you just make a soft touch before you try to accelerate the play, just that change in pace is gonna fool so many defenders. Try it in your games and I guarantee you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so those are the three strategies, but like I said, when I got closer to Grand Champ, there was one bonus mechanic that actually, when I rewatched this gameplay, I noticed came up again and again. No, it's not wave dashes. No, it's not air roll or air dribbles or even flip resets. Surprisingly, it's just fast aerials. I know, I know, maybe a little bit anticlimactic, but what I noticed, I actually started playing some games with Striped because he was GC1 and I was C3 after the reset. When we were playing together, I started to realize half of my goals were just coming from me fast aerialing quicker than the defenders. I think the key reason fast aerials are so good in champ is because people at this rank are so focused on shooting, they're not really focused on just getting a quick beat. And the truth is, guys, Rocket League is about two things, direction changes and beating the opponent, right? So it doesn't matter if you can shoot the ball at their net. What's even better is just playing it around them and then shooting the open if you can make it. Plus, just so many people below Grand Champ clearly don't know how to fast aerial properly. If you just watch one of my quick tutorials on how to fast aerial and you get it down five, 10 minutes, it's it's purely a car control thing. So you don't even have to worry about the ball. You just put a little bit of time in. Oh my God. Like just being faster than these players to the ball whenever there's a jump ball, it's going to earn you one to two goals per game at these ranks. On top of all that, like this was only in twos. So the fact that I could just fast aerial quicker, I mean, imagine if you translate this over and you're like a threes player, I mean, it'd probably be even better. Anyways, I could go on and on, but seriously, so many people are doing this wrong. Like if you're not 100% confident that your fast aerials are correct, I would maybe check one of my fast aerial tutorials because so many people are just not doing this right. To save time, I won't get into the details here, but yeah, learn how to fast aerial. It, it, it will help you in your games, guaranteed. Okay, so those were the three main strategies plus a bonus mechanic I threw in there that I used to climb back to GC on stream. I tried to talk about stuff that other people don't talk about a lot on YouTube. So let me know down in the comments below if that helped. If you want more free tips and you want to be the first notified when I go live, definitely check out my free public discord. I've got tons of free resources in there to help you get better. But otherwise, all I ask is that you share this video with one champ two friend who needs it. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy. That's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace guys. <laughs>